Hi everyone. Um, we've got our line drawing down here. Uh, you can probably just see the outline there quite lightly. I'm using, obviously as I explained before, that I'm using the um, Claire Fontaine Pastel Matte in the Anthracite shade and I just used, just for the sake of transferring a line image across, I used the graphite transfer paper um, and my stylus to press it through. So I have got a slight indentation on here as well. Um, now, if I just show you, this is, I'm going with the nib of the pencil, and then you can see, um, literally sort of, how big the eyes are. So, think about the eye tutorial videos that hopefully some of you have done. We are keeping in our mind, these are the pencils that I pulled out, let me just show you. These are the pencils that I pulled out for... The eyes because when I zoom in on the eyes this is what I see so if you're choosing to do just a head portrait of the wolf you'll probably be able to do the eyes a lot bigger and include more of these colors now I've pulled all of these out I'm probably not going to use them all um, but they are all in that eye <laughs> so if I just get the nib of the pencil again put it up against the eye now this I'm going to zoom in now as well so obviously we're going to focus on the eye a little bit more than just from a distance. Okay, so now I've zoomed in so much that when I start adding um, the pencil, but there you can see there's the nib of the pencil, it's actually really enlarged now, um, so much larger than life. So the eyes look a lot larger than life as well. So I'm going to pop my glassine paper up here and we're just going to attempt to get as much. Let me just pull here the reference photo up if it will focus but if I zoom in here you can see especially on this eye over here right okay you can see here we've got the whites the greys the blue green golds um, terracotta could put mortem um, in dancer in blue we've got so much of the color there but in reality we can hardly see that when we zoom out to the size that we're going to be, let me just see, there's the eye there, about that size. So we're going to try and get as much of those colours in as possible into this tiny space. So you need to keep your pencils really, really sharp. So, saying that, I'm going to try, first of all, just to pop in roughly where the highlight is. I'm going in with the white. I'm going to like say if you've done the eye tutorial video you know that we can glaze over these eyes and what I'm going to do is I probably won't take them to completion on this first pass either I just want to get something in place there and white is probably a little bit too bright across here and that's why I've actually got a warm grey in that range of pencils I've pulled out as well So that's just a hint of that highlight coming in there. Now I'm going to go in with my black just to give us a nice outline. So, so with your pressure very light pressure. I'm just feeling, I say, you'll find I say this in pretty much all of my videos. When I first start drawing any portrait, it doesn't matter how many ex portraits I've done over the years, how much experience I've built up, each time you come in to the studio, um, one, you'll personally feel probably, depending on what mood you're in, um, but also the temperature is different in here today than on other days. Um, so the pencils might have a slightly different feel. It's a new sheet of paper. I don't know until I get going sort of how this paper is going to feel. So I tend to say I feel my way around. And I do, I just, I'm quite tentative with my initial approach. I'm just lightly going in and I can increase this afterwards obviously. Okay, 
so we can start this off, like I say, this video. I'm drawing this full-size portrait, and the size I'm doing it is approximately 16 by 16 inch, which is big, but partly because I want this piece going into an exhibition as well, and I want to show you, you know, the detail that I can get in. I would say, you guys, if you're going to approach this, try going sort of 12 by 12, um, if you want to be really ambitious, go for the, and you're confident enough to, go for the full size. Go 16 by 16, the same as me. But, I'm only really doing that because, like I say, I want it to be quite a nice, big, impressive piece for the exhibition, as well as for the tutorial. So, just getting in this shape of these eyes here. So yeah, sorry, I was saying that, yeah, because this is such a big piece, see, I've already gone off at a tangent because I'm concentrating. Because it's such a big piece, we are going to be doing some of this in, re in real time and some of this um, will be speeded up. So I'm just starting this first part off here with real time. Now I'm going to pop a little hint of blue because this photo was taken outside. So there is a hint of, the, it was a lovely blue sky that day actually, I took the photos. So we're just going to pop a hint across there. And also I'm going to pop a hint of this blue down around that outer lid, lower lid, sorry see already I need a different colour in there that's sort of a um, pinky grey oh and I'm like so I'm going to try and stick as well to polychromos throughout but use your pencil conversion charts let's say Karen Hull does amazing conversion charts and use any brand just just convert the colours get your closest match you don't have to use the exact tool. Obviously if you want to create exactly the same effect as I do, um, try to use the same materials, but don't not do the um, tutorial just for the fact that you probably haven't got this brand of pencil. Okay, so I'm going to zoom out so this looks almost like, there you go, zooming in there. Um, you can already see here a little hint of those eyes. I'm going to take it back in again now so you can see what I'm doing. Now, what's next? Let's pop in. I've got here, this is olive brown, olive green yellowish. I'm going to pop in some of this green. See, I'm doing the small scumbling action again. Exactly like we did when we were creating that large, I mean, the, the, to give you an idea, the larger eye was sort of pretty much the whole size of this wolf's head. Um, so that's how much smaller we are doing these eyes. A hint of green there. I'm going to do both of these at the same time as well. Because thankfully, this photo was taken almost face on so for a change both eyes are looking pretty much similar in colour quite often light or reflection sort of catches the eye and so one eye can look completely different to the other in the photo so now I've got the terracotta I sort of ummed and ah, should I go for burnt ochre or terracotta, but I definitely think terracotta is the right one for this. If I change my mind, I will let you know. So little tiny strokes, remember, in towards the pupil, out, or in towards the pupil, out towards the corner of the eye. That's the way our strokes go, like I'm just showing you, that's the way, always never like that and 
I know that's not anything I learned from anyone, it's just something I sort of... Well, learnt by myself really and just sort of, I suppose, came naturally, I don't know, just seemed logical. There you go, I'm a very logical person. As I mentioned before, Mum wanted me to be a maths tutor. So obviously I'm very logical. I don't like it when things aren't logical. So you can see there, I've already gone over some of that original highlight that was there. But we'll pull that back again. So now I've got another favourite little pencil of mine, which is a, a green gold. I'm going to go in and just pick up a tiny bit of that dark olive green that we had in there before. Another little touch just on this side. Tiny little touch. Um, Oh, this is looking lovely already, actually, from, um, from a distance. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to soften a little bit of this highlight over here. A little touches. It is little touches because, say, we haven't got much space in there to work with. Now, where I've lost, again, if you've done the eye tutorial, where we've gone over it with other pencils now and lost it, I'm going back in again with that initial green that I used. I'm popping back in at anything that we've lost. I'll sit for that side little touch back over here and I just need to... Quiet, remember, I'm just concentrating. I've got my mouth open as well as I concentrate. Uh, <laughs> please don't try and picture me. <laughs> um, okay, so back in again now with my Dantherin blue just across. So, so we put little hints for in right at the beginning. We're just tightening that up again now. That's fine. Um, a little bit more of our burnt ochre just up into that pupil. I'm going to pull the pupil down into the burnt ochre again in a second. Believe it or not, I am getting through most of these pencils that I had lined up here. So I've burnt sienna here now as well. And I'm just going to pull some of that pupil down there. And I'll just a little touch of it. So again, those eye tutorials that I did with you, you can appreciate just how many colours and how much texture and that we popped in. So now that we're working smaller, it should be paying dividends for you because, and it should feel good as well because you know you can't get all of that detail in there, but you know it is in there. So you could, as long as you, you've got that theory in your head, you will you'll be surprised yourself at how much more you will now pop into an eye. Instead of just going in with one or two flat colours, like maybe you've gone in with a bit of, you just looked at this and thought, oh, okay, she's got amber eyes, I'm going to pop in amber, maybe a little touch of like something like this, sienna around the edge, black for the pupil, white for the highlight, it's like, no, it just gives it that so much more depth if you can get in. I, I, this, this one's eyes, this wolf's eyes, I need to find out the name of this one, I can't remember which one this is, just looking at it. Um, I'll speak to one of the keepers over the weekend and just see if they can um, help me identify this 
this one. Um, I'm not sure what I'm saying now. But yeah, the eyes of this one sort of remind me, I've got a warm grey now, it's, um, sort of remind me of an autumn forest, all the colours that you would see in the leaves. A really light touch in there as well. I just lift that a tiny bit there. Just give a hint of that upper lid there as well. my dark indigo here. Just want to cut into some of those highlights. Actually before I do that let me just pop back in my white highlight again. Tiny bit of white highlight here, stop on that. my light grey on the left eye. I don't know if I did it over on this one here. It doesn't look like I did. I just want to put this warm grey in over on this side as well. Before I go any further. that dark indigo over on this eye. And so I'm going to come back to this eye as well. Uh, once you've got all the fur surrounding it, that's when it sits. Almost like the fur frames it. That's what I call it. Um, it sits much nicer. So just pull this pupil down a tiny bit. Just pushing in from the outer edge. I'm going to glaze over that again in a second. Let me just repeat this over on this eye. Same over here, I just want to put in that coming down here. Yeah. 
This is just this is just these little lines I'm doing up around the eye just for my own benefit really just so it's like just enhancing some of the um graph outlines that are there do you know? so I've got something in framing those eyes. It's the same on this side, this actually the dark of the lower lid needs to be a lot thicker in there. Um, okay, you'll hear barking in the background. That will be Sherlock out on duty. As I mentioned in one of my previous videos, he's got a little friend in the garden, pheasant, who pops over to top up on food. I did see him out there earlier, so you hear Sherlock in the background. He's just shouting at the pheasant. I'm sure if the pheasant shouted back at him, Sherlock would run a mile. In fact, he'd probably be up here in the studio crying. So, Gio's going in now. I've got the black in here now. Gio's enhancing the original shadow. This looks like an eye, doesn't it, in the, um, in the video there? Alright, back over to this one. So a little bit of enhancement there. Now, I told you before, but remember, just a reminder, this Underneath this upper lid is usually one of the darkest areas on any animal portrait. So we just really want to emphasize that. There we go. I also found out as well it's a little interesting thing whilst we're doing the eyes. I mean, we'll, 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 this information will all go into um, the written tutorial that form the book as well and on all the little mini bite-sized tutorials that I'm doing. Now, you notice with the domestic cat, the cat had slits for eyes, slots, um, and now this wolf has got round pupils. The domestic cat has slotted pupils. Well, most wild cats have round pupils as well. Horses, um, sheep, cows I think, all have um, horizontal pupils. So sort of like oval horizontal pupils. Difference being, the slotted pupils um, are for night hunters. They're predators, but they're for night hunters, because then they control the opening and closing of that slot. Most day hunters have round pupils like this. Now, the reason the poor horses and the sheep have got horizontal pupils that go pretty much all the way around their eyes is because they're the hunted. These are the predators. They're the hunted. This guy doesn't need pupils all the way around because no one's really going to come and hunt him. There's only man really that's his enemy. He might come up against a bear I suppose but they're pretty equal if there's a pack of wolves. The poor sheep and like everything, they need that horizontal pupil because they need to see <laughs> if the predator's coming to get them. So that is why you've got different shape pupils to animals. I know a lot of people sometimes you know, point out the different shape, but they don't often explain why. So there you go. Little fact of the day. Just increase that around there. Now what I'm going to do, I'm just going to zoom out now. 
So you can see they're starting to look like eyes. Pop that shape in there and across there. Looking under that eyelid. Make sure. See, I'm quite quick. It's because I'm going to come back into this. Just want to soften that back there as well. In here. What I'm going to do now is just repeat what we did before. So where I've lost a tiny bit of that green again, I'm just going to glaze in a tiny bit more over the top. Same over this side. Now I've got my earth green. I'm going to pop in Final highlights over here using that touch of the earth green. Same here. Now I've lost my terracotta. Terracotta? I almost said a cross between terracotta and ochre then, but terracotta colour. Pop that back in again there. And on the other side, Do you know now I've done this, I think ochre would be better. Well, terracotta is slightly brighter. So like I say, your choice which one you go for in there. You might find the cadmium orange, but that is a little bit too bright, the cadmium. But you should be able to see this now, it's sort of we're getting that effect that we had when we were doing the bigger eye portraits of the glazing. A little bit more in there with that dantrum blue across the top again. A warm grey again. I'm going to use some of my cream because I just need a little bit of softening. Some of this terracotta. There we go, a little bit of softening with terracotta. And the same on this side. To be honest, that is pretty much it for that first little go at these eyes. So, again, I'll just increase the pressure around there. Take this out a little bit here. There we go. And then, like I said, that the rest of the details will we'll come, we'll come back in. Just pop in hints of lower lid coming around here. Side, we had some of that. Take 
a little bit too light there. I'm going to knock it back though with a tiny touch of the blue, but I actually see there's some lovely purple in there as well. So let's see if I've got that pencil to hand. Which one is it of these? I would say it's going to be, I've got it, it's the Delft Blue. See it's not quite purple, not quite blue, it's just a little hint around there. That's beautiful and there is actually a little touch just up over the top. If you can't see the colours I see, don't put them in. Um, Got a, this is your version as well. Obviously, you follow my technique, but put in your own version of colour. So I'll just zoom in a tiny bit again. You can see. See, that's obviously bigger than real life now. So let's take it back out. And if I get a full size pencil, it's pretty much a full size pencil. Um, if I can zoom out any further, there we go, it's as far, far as we can zoom out, so that's a full size pencil pretty much there, so, and obviously it's smaller than my little fingernail, those eyes, um, but that is it, we are off to a start with our eyes. Next I'm going to put in sketching my lines a lot more all over, put in some more shadows with pencil and then we're going to go in with the pan pastel. Okay, that's the first stage and we'll go on to the next stage now.